Hello all, this is Sandeep. Today I'm going to show you how I export data from Power BI to a SQL Server using Python. As you may already be aware uh, that you don't really need Python or R to set up connection between Power BI and SQL Server. Um, you can do that pretty easily uh, using SQL Server Management Studio and DAX Studio. Um, and if you're not aware of that, let me show you that uh, real quick. And I will also explain the difference between using that method versus uh, using Python and R um, to export data out. So if you have uh, SQL Server Management Studio uh, installed, uh, what you would need to do is start your Power BI um, and then start uh, DAX Studio and then uh, down below here in the right uh, bottom right corner you have localhost and the port number um, so in in SSMS we would just uh, start uh, create a new analysis server connection for that and you would get um, uh, you would set up a connection between Power BI and this and then you would be able to write tax queries um, and then write SQL queries as well on that data set um, now, if you close Power BI, however, uh, you will lose the connection uh, between SSMS and uh, Power BI. So if you need to save that data um, for, uh, if you want to export it out, for example, then you would have to uh, first create the connection for analysis server um, and then export the data out from there. Um, and that's really the key difference between using this method versus using Python and R. So when we create, use Python or R, uh, we uh, we actually exporting data out from Power BI um, as a local server instance um, uh, to SQL Server. And then even if you close the connection or even if you close Power BI, you will still have a copy of that data in your um, uh, in your lo uh, local server. So. Uh, let me show you how I do that. <clears throat> and this has been written about uh, widely um, and it was done previously. So in fact, uh, Sohail Bakshi, who is one of the MVPs, he has an excellent post on how to do this exact same thing using R. Um, I use R, but I use Python more than R. Um, and I've used this method using R for a while um, and I, I did not see anybody write about it or show uh, how to do it using Python. So I, I figured I would just uh, create a video to show how I do it with Python. MK Feldman also has a, re a really good post on how to export data um, as a CSV file using Python. I would really encourage you to uh, read this one. Um, so, but the, uh, what I'm going to show you is how to use, how to use Python uh, to do these exact uh, same things. So for you to do this, you will need to have uh, Python installed. Once you have installed Python, um, just go to options, make sure um, you have under Python scripting, you are pointing to the right home directory or the, uh, the virtual environment that you have created. I would encourage you to create a virtual environment. Um, if you use Python in R uh, frequently, um, I would also point you to um, you know, to one of the blog posts that I, I wrote about um, my recommendations for uh, using Python in R in Power BI. So take a look at that as well. So you'll have to have that installed and you'll have to have SQL Alchemy and Pandas uh, installed as well. Uh, SQL Alchemy allows you to um, connect Python or access Python um, using uh, this module. Um, and you'll have to have uh, SQL Server Management Studio installed as well. One of the limitations of using Python or R uh, in Power BI is um, your data privacy settings uh, need to be set to none or public. Um, and so, and th that obviously has implications, but um, this would be a temporary thing. Uh, if you're exporting the data out, you would just reference that and um, just change the privacy settings. And then once you have exported the data out, you would just revert it back to organizational or you know, whatever your uh, data privacy setting is. Um, let me show you where that is. 
So I have my data loaded from Contoso uh, server or Contoso database. So if you go to data source settings, just make sure you have this set up to a public or none. Um, and then if you go to options and go to privacy under current file and then just check uh, ignore the privacy level. So what this will do is um, it will ignore the privacy level on uh, all the data sources and you can um, it, you don't necessarily have to do it depending on your data source you may not even need to do this uh, but if you run into uh, query dot firewall error then you know, you'll have to uh, at least temporarily um, make sure that the, the privacy levels are ignored um, so once you have that um, it's pretty straightforward from that point onward so you would apply all your transformations as you would uh, normally do um, and then just reference the create a duplicate copy of that query um, using reference um, and then reference that query uh, apply any additional transformations that you want um, and then we go to transform and run python script and a window will pop up and it will show you the window so the window will pop up and then you can enter your uh, the uh, the code that i'm just gonna uh, show you uh, in a minute uh, but we enter our code over here hit okay um, and that's it uh, we'll be able to export the data out to a sql server so let me just walk you through the code it's pretty easy um, and simple uh, so we import SQL Alchemy. Notice we did not have to import pandas um, because Power BI imports pandas by default, so we don't need to do that. Uh, and then for the parameters for setting up the connection, um, you'll need to know what driver, SQL driver that you're using. If you don't know that, uh, just go to your Windows search and then type in ODBC. We have, uh, we'll show you, so ODBC and then go to drivers and then you should see which driver you have. So just copy that, put it in here, no single quotation or double quotations around it. So we do that. Then the name of your server, uh, which in my instance is localhost, database name. So here I'm uh, calling it PBI. That's where I want to export the database where I want to export uh, all the Power BI data to. Uh, so when you do it for the first time, you don't necessarily need to have this database in that on that server. Um, so you're starting from scratch. You can just call it um, whatever you want, and the script will create that database for you. Um, so the, this does not need to be in, does not need to be an existing database. And the trusted connection is yes. Uh, in my case, I don't have any uh, authentication set up for this server. Um, if you do, um, then you would just pass an argument for username is equal to, and with your username and then password is equal to, and trusted connection equal to yes. And we connect to the server, and then um, we dataset.sql, which would uh, export this data um, from from Python data frame called dataset to uh, SQL and then we include what uh, the name for the table um, under this database uh, again you, this does not need to be uh, an existing table um, so if you name something here uh, the script will create uh, a table uh, whatever your table name may be um, for you and then index is equal to false is uh, if you want the python data the python index um, we don't need that and then if exists um, if the script finds that you already have uh, a table called this under database named this then what do you want to do do you want to append to the existing uh, table or do you want to replace it in most cases, you would just want to replace it, but if you are snapshotting the data, for example, um, then you would append it. Uh, and that's really the key difference between using this method versus setting up um, a connection analysis server uh, connection uh, in SSMS. With this method, you are able to export the data out over a period of time, um, and then 
uh, replace it or append to the existing data that the column names um, number of columns that has to align um, it has to be the same when you are appending the data uh, but if you have that then you are essentially able to um, append to an existing table let's go to power query uh, and then once we have filtered the data and then we have uh, entered the script uh, you just hit ok and this may take a while uh, depending on your data um, i have exported uh, millions of rows worth of data using this method without any issues um, in fact uh, i think the last one that i did was about six million rows um, it took about 10 15 minutes to do it so uh, it does take a while um, but yes you can do it if i go to um, SQL Server Management Studio, you'll see. So I already, I already did that. Um, so if I go ahead over here, you can see um, under this schema, I have uh, from PBI table, and then all of that data from there uh, is here. And I think I have about 12 million rows of uh, data over here. It's still executing, but I have about 12 billion of, uh, rows of data here. Um, and again, no issues with that. Another quick way for you, if you don't want to go through all of this hassle, um, I have created a function, a custom function in Power BI. So if you just copy, if you want to use this method using Python, what you can do is just create a new uh, blank query. Uh, so you would just go and then blank query. And then in advanced editor, just copy this entire code as is and hit done and once you do that you will get this uh, uh, UI. Um, I have tried to include uh, some description and um, how to use this um, but so what you would do here is which source which table you want to use um, so let's say I want to use this and then include the name of the driver so um, in my case I have set up the parameter for that as um, this ODBC driver um, and that's my default so it will take that and then you can use yours so you'll do all of enter all of these things just the key thing to mention here is table name um, table name needs to be in single quotation mark um, and then if exists needs to be in single quotation mark so if you go to table from PBI it's in single quotation and then if exists, if you want to do uh, replace or append, that needs to be in single quotation. So if when you do that, just invoke, um, and then it will create, uh, essentially execute that script for you, um, and then do that. So I did that exact same thing, just for reference purposes, and then I have uh, the school uh, or table over here. Um, uh, which was uh, exported using uh, this uh, custom function method. So just wanted to show you how you can do that easily. Um, I, will, uh, pro I will provide this uh, custom uh, function on my blog, so check it out over here. Again, uh, my blog post is at um, uh, powerbi.com, um, or you can, you can also follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at powerbi, and you can get um, all the latest blog posts from me there. If you have any questions about this method, feel free to uh, write it in the comments and I will be uh, happy to help you if you have any questions. Thank you.